And so during the season of Easter, we, we like to talk about all the ways that we see Jesus alive and at work in the world. And so, we, um, and so every week we talk about, um, we talk about this, this baptism and, and how we live in those promises of, of God loving us and being part of God's family. So we see Jesus in all the ways that we see love in the world. So what are some of the ways that you see love in your family? Do you help parents out with chores? Yeah, paint the house and wash windows and that kind of stuff? I don't really paint. Don't really paint, yeah, me either. But like cleaning your room and being, being nice to each other as siblings, right? That's ways of showing love, giving hugs. Yeah, or when we're out and about, when we're out shopping or something, holding doors open for people. Yeah, all kinds of ways to show love. And so every way we do that is a way that uh, we see Jesus alive through us. And every time we see love done to us, that's the way we see Jesus alive in someone else um, loving us. And so, uh, so today, uh, today, one of our, our readings in Scripture uh, it's a guy named Paul, and he talks about how, how love uh, is, if we do things but we don't have love, it, uh, it doesn't always work very well, and it, it, it doesn't uh, help bring love into the world, even when we're doing really great things. And so his encouragement is, is, to, uh, is to remember to do everything we do in love. And we'll talk more about what that means. But for now, um, there's this song that I learned at when I went to Bible camp. It's called The Love Round. Have you ever learned any? I'll sing it for you, and, uh, and you can tell me if you've heard it. But it starts out, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love all humankind as you would love yourself. Have you ever heard that one? There's some cool actions. Can I teach them to you? Yeah. So you start, start standing out here. And it's love, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. Why do you think we point to a shoe? Shoes have souls, right? Yeah, don't tip over. A oh, soul and all your mind. <laughs> yeah. And love all humankind. It's like everybody, right? as you would love yourself, and we sing it again. It's the second time we do it differently, but we'll just sing that first one together. You can, you can keep up with me and do the actions. Sing, sing if, you, if you catch on, okay? Ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love all humankind as you would love yourself and love the Lord your God with all your heart. <laughs> <laughs> and all your soul and all your mind. And love all humankind as you would love yourself. And there's more parts, but we'll learn more of that another day. So I just, uh, so um, I'm going to send you back to your seats, and I thank you for coming up, but we're going to pray first. Will you pray with me? Do you want to repeat after me, or do you just want to say amen when I'm done? Too many choices. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for showing us love and teaching us to love and be with us this week as we try our best to love each other and the world you made. Amen. You guys can head back to your seats. Thanks for coming up today. It was fun chatting with you. <laughs> All right, we continue with our lessons from Scripture. Reading our Scriptures, our first lesson, Paul writes to the early church at Corinth with strong visuals and even stronger hypotheticals to argue that love is the single most important expression in a Christian life. So we hear the Word of God from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, 
I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand my, over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love, love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, the childish ways ended. For now, we see in a mirror, dimly. But then, we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then, I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we welcome the gospel. gospel is according to Mark chapter 12. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. There are no easy answers. But the one uh, cut and dry or black and white, if it even is that, answer is this. Does it bring more love into the world or not? This is the answer I give to my confirmation students whenever they start asking questions about behaviors, right? Is it a sin to do this? Does God want us to do that? Is it okay to do this if? etc. There are no easy answers. Right? Well, that's a tricky question, isn't it? Certainly there are some obvious answers now and then, but really most of life is lived in that gray area. The best we can do is to see our choices as if dimly through a mirror, as Paul says, in terms of does this show love or does it not? So one time I went to this food place. I ordered ahead and online, and I came a couple minutes early to, to pick it up. When I got there, I gave my order name, and I said, I'm a couple minutes early. You're probably still working on it. It's fine. Uh, 
minute after minute passed by, and person after person started coming in the door. And after watching for a while, it was becoming obvious that uh, many people were ordering, and this guy was all alone, making all these orders to fill all these orders. So several minutes early turned into like 30 minutes late. And uh, as everyone knows, that kind of situation can start to tip into that perfect example of, does this bring love into the world? Does this add life to us or does it not? Now I'm sure that poor guy felt pretty overwhelmed. But I will say that as I watched, I saw a lot of patience and kindness a lack of being rude from all those late, hungry humans that evening. As for myself, I had to, uh, as he was making my order, I had to catch that, that order that was slightly altered, that it was made correctly. and I did so as the best I could with a smile and a thank you and headed on my way. A smile, a thank you, and some patience and understanding these are the ordinary, everyday seeds of God's love planted into the world. Paul talks about how, about seeing now only dimly. It can be difficult for us to see if some of our actions are lived with love or lead to more love or not. Sometimes a situation is not as simple as a smile and a thank you. But we trust that as we practice those things, the seeds will grow. And that the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit's help, we will still show God's love in the world in the more complex situations. Today, one of the things we're thinking about are the ones in our congregation who are, gathered, who are graduating. And high school, college, uh, going on to the next phase of their lives. There, they, you, will learn through study or working or just life itself, general life, so many things about the world. And you will, as we all do, be faced with choices and ideas that challenge you. As we all encounter the world, we, we wrestle with our choices. Does this show love? Does this bring love into the world or does it bring hurt into the world? Even what does my silence do? Conversation in the, in the world, in the news right now, is on the, the war in Gaza and Israel and all the protesters around, especially, protests especially on college campuses. If you've done any learning about the history of Israel and Palestine, uh, you'll know that it is very complicated. It involves attempts to give a home to people displaced by horrific 